We just saw those April home price growth numbers come out. They grew faster than March. So what's your initial reaction to those numbers and how far is the property sector now from full recovery? Well, I mean, the April numbers is quite strong. We've seen a good rebound from uh, March and uh, uh, February. I mean, contract sales in April have shown quite strong rebound, um, almost even comparing to a year ago. And most developers have expressed confidence for the rest of the year. Uh, it is important to remember that a home purchase is usually not impulse-driven or repeat transaction. So whatever Q1 sales that did not take place, uh, they were simply deferred and not lost. Uh, because that we're quite optimistic for the full year, we're projecting full year sales uh, in line with 2019. And in which property sectors are you seeing the biggest rebound, whether it's in the mall areas, whether it's in residential? Uh, it's in, in both areas. I mean, obviously, residential, uh, you know, we're seeing the, the strong price growth. And, uh, and in the retail, we high frequency data have shown that uh, we're very strong, sharp V-shaped rebound, uh, especially in luxury sector, and we expect the mass consumption to follow that shortly. I guess we've got to ask about volumes and how this data is skewed by that, because I believe it's the fastest pickup in home prices since October of last year. Um, well, I mean, it's these monthly data are quite volatile, but if you look at on a year-on-year -year basis, I mean, we don't have the number out yet, but likely we're going to continue to see uh, mid-single-digit percentage growth on a year-on-year -year basis. And considering the, comp uh, the country's GDP and the inflation rate, and I think that's sustainable as well as reasonable. So Philip, where does that leave these property companies in China, those who ch trade in Hong Kong as well as in China and do business in Hong Kong and China uh, at the moment? Because, for instance, Hong Kong, you've got, always got the threat of uh, this double whammy of not just the virus, but the possibility of these protests returning uh, here, here on the streets of the territory en masse. Well, I think, uh, you know, in, term, in terms of the, the valuation of the, the company, uh, the property developers, most Chinese property names are fairly valued at this point because that's just reflecting the general confidence uh, of the market that property sales in China will come back after the virus. But the Hong Kong names are undervalued, as you said, due to the twin threats of the protests as well as the virus. So our view is that on a relative basis, the virus is actually a net positive for Hong Kong because protest was a Hong Kong specific event with hard to gauge political risk. A virus is a global event and Hong Kong is emerging out of this in relatively good shape and its status as the global financial center intact, if not strengthened. And what policies do you expect to come out of the National People's Congress as it relates to the property sector? And is there still a big concern around property speculators at this point? Um, I, I think so. I think the government's focus is to achieve a moderately prosperous society. So that means the policy target won't be as quantitative uh, driven. Uh, that means the government will be more tolerant of a lower GDP growth rate. Instead, the focus will be on employment as well as the quantitative metrics. So on the fiscal side, we expect higher infrastructure spending, which is a focus on poverty uh, alleviation and environmental protection, which are designed to improve the quality of life. And on the monetary side, we expect looser conditions to support SME lending, the manufacturing sector, and also to stimulate consumption. Um, the real estate sector, tangentially, uh, we think it will benefit from more funds for shantytown redevelopment type of projects and also slightly lower mortgage rate. But no major easing for the sector is expected, nor is it necessary.